Um, what do you credit, like, Israel's only been in the UFC for just a little over a year. He's had five fights, and he's already fighting for a belt. Why do you think the UFC is pushing him that that way? <coughs> I think that, I mean, the UFC is pushing Israel because... First and foremost is he can fight, yeah, and he can fight, and he's learned to do that to a high level well before he got to the UFC. If you want a, if you want a blueprint on how to build a UFC fighter and how to get them to rise quickly through the ranks, then follow Israel's career like before he was in the UFC. That's how you do it. Um, so he's able to fight really well and in a very unique way um, with a very high uh, skill set and a, at, at a very high, technically a very high level. And he also has an engaging personality. And people, uh, uh, you know, people are drawn to that straight away. UFC recognise that. UFC, uh, you know, one thing the UFC is good at is recognising who the stars are and putting the things in place for that star to grow and I think that's I think the UFC just recognized that and then just ran with it and that's why we were able to get the machine behind us to push us and definitely and, and we're not you know like we recognize that as well and we used it to it you know we 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 oiled the machine and used it to the best of our ability as well I mean we me and Israel had a pretty clear plan from very early on, right up until even when we were in the UFC. I, I, I mean, um, fighters like uh, Israel comes to me and he's like, did you hear what uh, Weidman said? He said, or, or uh, Jacques Arie said, or one of them, or I think they're all saying that he doesn't deserve to be in the position he is. Well, yeah, he does deserve it. He does deserve it. That's the green-eyed monster talking. He deserves it. He put himself strategically, tactically, he put himself in a position to be here this early. He played the game. And I'm not talking about the game. I'm not talking about the game inside. The, when I talk about the game, that's the whole game. That's what happens in the back rooms. That's what happens in the offices. That's what happens in the boardrooms and what happens in the back Back, backstage, back of the UFC, back of the stadium. That's the whole game, the all, all encompassing. He played that better than those guys. And those guys weren't, aren't able to emulate it. Well, that's their fault, you know, like Floyd Mayweather talks about that a lot. Like he was the best ever. That doesn't mean he was, he's talking about the ring, he's talking about the whole game. That's what Israel's really good at. He's able to put himself in this position and we had a pretty clear plan. Our plan was to get to the belt, and then when we realized that we could oil the UFC machine to help us, I said to Israel, I said, why are we, why, why are we gonna fight Romero, Jacare, Weidman, Rockhold? It looks to me like we can fight those guys with the belt. Why don't we get the belt and then fight them? Because it looks to me like if we manipulate this the right way, we we can we won't have to challenge them. We'll be able to challenge them with the belt. What's better? What's better for us financially, in t in terms of just about everything? What's better for us to fight those guys to get to the belt, or to get the belt and then fight them? Because it looks like that we can take this road here, this path or we can take that path. And that path there, the, the one I'm talking about, is the one that they all had to take. We had to go through this row of, there's this kind of like, you know, this murderous row of fighters. Well, yeah, that's the way you did it. But Israel's better at playing the game than you guys. So he's still gonna go through that murderous row, but he's gonna do it making way more money than all of you, with way more eyes, with way more attention, doesn't mean he's not going to fight those guys. He's just going to, he's just done it in a way smarter and strategically and tactically better fashion. Those guys can't get angry at that. What those guys should be doing is stealing that blueprint from Israel and trying to use that for himself. So when they come up with these comments and um, 
Israel, I don't know if he gets upset or not, or he's just, then um, they're, they're looking at it the wrong way. They're looking at it completely the wrong way. Can you elaborate on the blueprint that you had before getting into the UFC? Like, yeah. You know, he said, I wanted the UFC champion. It's like, all right, we're going to extensive kickboxing career. You know, didn't the UFC approach you like years ago as well? Yeah. Something like that. Can you elaborate on that? Again? Yeah, so initially he wanted to get <coughs> into MMA um, when he first came to the gym. And um, I, I, I don't know how, how I, I, it's hard to know how this worked out, but I, I probably, when I look at it, I probably had a bias for, this, for, for kickboxing and Thai boxing because that's what I knew best. Even though I was deep into an MMA career by the time he came, I'd done jiu-jitsu for many years and wrestling and stuff. But I probably had a bias towards kickboxing, so I said, um, let's get into kickboxing. Um, because that's a very difficult skill to learn. Not that jujitsu and wrestling and all the rest aren't, but kickboxing is a very difficult skill to master that takes many, many, many years, just like those other, just like those other martial arts. And let's get into that. And that's another way that you can sustain your living. That's another way you can make a living why still working your MMA game? So, what really happened is we went astray for actually for a, for a couple of years, like because he became really good at that sport and started making some really really good money. We kind of took that direction for a little while and we went deep into that sport, but it was never really the plan. The plan was to kind of segue to that sport and and do a bit there and then move to another sport and move to another sport and kind of do it like that. But just the kickboxing career took off. So we just stayed there for a little longer than we should. We, the whole time Israel was working on his overall game as well though. Um, early in his kickboxing career, not so much. He just did the odd bit of jujitsu and a bit of wrestling and stuff. But as that kickboxing career progressed, he got deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper until it got to the point, like in the, in the two or three years before he came to the UFC, where he was almost doing, uh, you know, like he was practicing MMA every day, regardless of how many kickboxing fights, MMA was a part of the daily routine instead of like three times a week. He was doing it every day continuously for, you know, three or four years or something. So... And that was the plan, and the plan was to get him the right opponent, building up to the UFC. We did that through an organization in China who, who were great for us. They were able to back us. They flew us opponents from all over the world and stuff, and the right opponents, the opponents that we needed, uh, Russian Sambo guys, wrestlers, people that were able to put him through so, you know, a bit of adversity. And we built him up like that. Um, and then when we decided that maybe this is time to start, you know, moving towards UFC, then we stepped up the opponents a little bit. We didn't even step up necessarily the level, but we just stepped up like we fought Malvin Gillard. We fought some, started fighting some good guys until we came to the UFC. So it was a bit of a slow burn, but it was all part of like a plan.